I'll be doing a little bit of a deeper dive on those selected modules that Paul mentioned earlier. So um, the first up is essentially prediction. So when we're talking prediction, we're looking at analyzing um, things like your failure rates, uh, mean time before failure, so all those data and metrics uh, that we might encounter when we're performing these sort of analysis. Um, the benefits of using risk and reliability and prediction in itself is uh, the ability to use a variety of different calculation models. So shipped right out of the box is uh, a wide variety of these models. So everything from your electrical to mechanical systems, it will allow you to essentially populate uh, the relevant fields that you then can then fill in and um, perform your analysis. So we're not switching between multiple documentation, um, multiple Excel sheets that have our calculations and formulas in the background. Um, everything's built into that software and works off the system tree. Um, so we have an extensive parts library. So um, sort of out of the box, standard components, semiconductors, um, capacitors, things alike, where you can essentially use those to incorporate or build up your system tree, um, or you can add and create your own. Uh, so you can essentially go through, create multiple projects, um, and then add these components over time to establish a database for use throughout your organization. Prediction itself also feeds into a lot of the other modules within risk and reliability. So this allows you to leverage existing information uh, throughout your project. So you're not having to manually fill in that data over and over. Um, it's right then and there, it's just a matter of uh, linking that data to pull it forward. Prediction itself also has um, out of the box uh, reporting and graphing built in. So you can essentially go ahead and uh, generate reports, um, graphs and templates uh, for you to represent your data and then distribute um, if need be. Okay, so next up is uh, FMEA, so failure modes and effect analysis. So the idea here is that uh, we commonly would conduct this within Excel, you know, going through line by line. Um, the idea within risk and reliability is we can define firstly different types of FMEAs, uh, whether we're looking at specific processes, um, functionality, or the components themselves. And we can use things like a list library or a fault equivalence file to essentially standardize on the information that we are uh, inputting into our system. So more often than not, you might have scenarios where uh, essentially you have variations in your data where individuals are inputting information. Um, they might phrase it a bit differently to you know, another member within the organization. Um, this is a way of standardizing on that. Um, by having predefined filters or predefined selections that users can just use the drop down and select. Okay, so um, we can also calculate and determine your, your RPNs, which um, I guess line items are most important and which ones that we need to look at in more detail. We can also customize the format. So we can easily restructure our table to suit our individual needs. We may be using templates or standards, uh, depending on the field that you're interested in. And there's some out of the box solutions, as well as the ability to customize uh, and create your own. Okay, in terms of RBD, uh, so essentially reliability block diagrams, um, we're able to generate um, individual diagrams themselves. So, you know, using the interface, um, essentially just adding components together um, to determine that process. And then from that, we can actually link this to create more complex systems. So usually you might have, in this example, a computer. Um, we can take that and really break it down into all those system components. Um, and I'll show you a little bit about that later on. Um, so we have the ability to also compute a wide variety of calculations. So, you know, determining everything from redundancies, corrective maintenance, um, optimizing and spares. So if you have um, a specific maintenance procedure, you have um, cost associated with storing um, repairs and spare parts, then we can all input that in and see how it affects the overall uh, total cost of the system, reliability, availability, 
and so forth. We can also define graphics for certain blocks. So when you're looking at a block diagram, more often than not, it, it's nice to see the context of it. So we can add those graphics in to make uh, certain blocks easily, easily distinguishable, um, as you can see such um, in this example here. We can also reuse information. So um, as I mentioned previously, prediction, uh, FMEA, a lot of other modules within the risk and reliability suite can actually feed into your RBD. So you're leveraging existing information, um, speeding up that turnaround um, and not having to constantly uh, duplicate information in multiple locations. So similar to RBD, the fault tree analysis um, is essentially conducting uh, analysis on certain event or the events leading up to it. So we can create our diagrams using a wide variety of gates and events. Um, so we have a combination of static and dynamic, um, all of which um, is out of the box. And then we can simply drag and drop um, and add them to our environment. We can navigate around, jump through uh, between different diagrams using the associated context sensitive menus. And then we can separate out complex uh, FTA diagrams using things like transfer gates. So we can imagine when we have an overly complex structure, then that be, well, that's very difficult to sort of navigate just on the one page, depending on how big your computer screen is, of course. And we can essentially jump out and break those branches down. So it makes us easier to essentially navigate and jump around. From that, we can also highlight things like cut sets. So in order to achieve the top level event, um, what are the events um, and gates leading up to it? Um, so we can calculate those and then easily highlight that within the module itself. And lastly, the, I'll cover the failure reporting and corrective action system being Fracas. So the idea here is that uh, we're using the existing system tree. So the same thing that's used to um, model our prediction. Um, so essentially a standard um, common ground for all your bomb material. And then from here, we can define uh, specific incidents relating to specific assemblies and parts. So you might uh, be tracking this information. Um, this might be coming in through customer complaints, um, R&D or internal testing. And we can then log that information against the corresponding part. So you'll have all the information in terms of when it should be failing in terms of your prediction analysis, but we'll also be able to see how often it is failing in terms of real world data. So we can input this information using forms as shown here. So this is an easy to use interface that can be created within risk and reliability to help um, prevent users from getting, I guess, a little overwhelmed um, from this tabulated table format or Excel format. And we can essentially add information based on highlighted fields. These incidents can then be escalated to a problem. So we're essentially grouping uh, a multitude of different incidents. Um, it can be one, it can be 10 uh, or any, any amount really. And then we can associate that to a problem to highlight, um, I guess, the source issue or the root cause of that. From that, we can also take that problem and we can escalate that to a problem report and feed it back into windshield PLM. 